There's a lot to learn when it comes to color adjustments in Lightroom, but I'm going to show you everything you need to know to create crispy, clean edits as quickly as possible. Hey everybody, I'm Austin James Jackson, a professional landscape photographer based in Southern Utah. In today's video, we're talking about all things color in Lightroom Classic. Lightroom has numerous tools that adjust color. I'm going to talk about all of them and the best uses today. Now, I don't want to waste any more time. Let's go ahead and jump right in there to Lightroom Classic. So here I am in Lightroom. I've adjusted this file for things like brightness, but I haven't touched the color at all. I'm going to talk about literally everything that you need to know about color when it comes to adjusting your image. First thing that I want to mention is understand that when you increase or decrease the contrast, this does affect the colors in your image. And most of these sliders will affect the color in your image, just not as directly as adjusting something like, say, the color mixer. But do understand that as you add contrast, you are also adding some color into your scene usually. So be aware of that. Uh, this image, like I said, I've gone through, I've adjusted highlights, shadows, whites, blacks. I've done some of the presence sliders, other things like that. But now I want to actually go in and fine tune the colors. Now, when we talk color, the very first thing that you need to adjust before doing anything else, I would really recommend is adjusting your white balance. Now the white balance is really important on this photo. It's already looking pretty good, but generally what I'm going for with white balance is I want my image to be as neutral as possible. Now, if you like toning your image, like warm or cool, you can do this here as well. Me personally, I like editing my images to be as realistic as possible. So I go in and adjust the white balance as you see fit. Um, you can use the eyedropper, but the eyedropper is really hit or miss, especially for nature or landscape photography. If you do like studio shots, the eyedropper might work a little bit better, but I usually just go through and adjust the temperature and the tint as I see fit and I will slide the bars. So I'm looking for like the most neutral color as possible. Um, I usually slide the temperature first. You can see as I start to slide this, these get to yellow down here. Uh, even though up here looks nice, uh, down here is definitely far too yellow. So I'm just going to bring that back out to about right there. This is simply just eyeballing it, looking at it and kind of just getting a gauge on your own of how it looks. Then you can go through and adjust the temp the tint and then you can continue to adjust the sliders until you find that the image is in a good spot. Now, if you've got a part of your image that's too blue, don't get rid of that here. A lot of people will like warm this up because they don't want these blues up here. Go like that. You don't want to do that. I'm going to show you guys how I adjust that a little bit later on. So don't worry about that too much right now, but do adjust the temperature and the tint first. Always be going back to fix the temperature and the tint as you see fit, as you continue to edit your image, because you will likely need to change it. But just like that is about how I want it right now. Now I'm going to go down. Another thing that I see a lot of especially outdoor and nature photographers like to do is go to these calibration sliders. I wouldn't recommend messing with these a whole heck of a lot, but one thing that you will see, um, or you probably won't know that they're doing it, but I know a lot of landscape photographers are doing it is they'll adjust the primary sliders down here. When I adjust something like the blue primary, this does not adjust just the blues similar to uh, what I'm going to show you guys in the color mixer here. This adjusts the amount of blue in every color. So if you didn't already know, every single pixel on the screen is made up of red, green, and blue RGB. The amount of red, green, or blue in each pixel makes up each color. So like a blue pixel has far more blue value than it does red or green, but things that are in between might have a mix of them. By increasing the primary, you increase the amount of blue, the amount of green, or the amount of red in each color, and you can adjust the hue as well. A lot of landscape photographers like to increase this blue primary. It kind of helps to make your colors pop, especially the yellows. And then sometimes people will adjust the red primary as well. Um, you can do this if you want. Honestly, I usually just play the red primary on a image by image basis, but the blue primary is a good thing to increase. You can also adjust the hue if you want, but I usually don't recommend that unless you've got a really old camera with a sensor that is not very good. But I usually will go through and just bring up the blue primary saturation. Um, that's all I'm going to do there. Do not worry if like, if you have an image with blue sky, the blue sky is going to be way oversaturated. Don't worry. We're going to fix that in just a second here. I'm going to scroll back up to the color mixer here. This is kind of your go-to for adjusting all things color. This is where you're going to do the heavy lifting. Now in this panel here, we've got a couple options, including the brand new point color. I'll show you how to use the mixer first. A lot of people will prefer the mixer just for simplicity's sake. Now you can go through and adjust hue, saturation, or luminance. The difference is hue is going to adjust the color. So if I grab the yellows, I can make them more green make them more red that adjusts the hue that is what hue is it 
affects literally the actual what the color looks like, like what shade the color is. When you go to saturation, that affects the intensity of the color. You can see as I increase or decrease the yellows, I add color or remove color from those trees. It'd be the same thing if I adjust the blues here. And then luminance affects the brightness of a color, it makes the color brighter or darker. This is a good way to pop colors in your scene. You could bring the blue luminance up, the yellow luminance up or down. So you can see as I increase or decrease these sliders, um, going all the way uh, to plus or minus 100 is usually gonna be too much, so that's something to keep in mind. But this is where you can adjust all things color. Now, recently Lightroom, and when I say recently, um, like fall of 2023, Lightroom added the point color feature. Point color allows you to use a color sample and adjust particular colors. Now, this is how I prefer to adjust my colors now since they added this. If you don't wanna go through, it's a little bit more complicated, just use the mixer here. But if you wanna do what I think is the best way to do it, use this point color. You simply grab, uh, click on that eyedropper, and then you can click somewhere on your image. So for this image, let's say I want to decrease the saturation of the blues. I'm going to go ahead and click on the blue right there. I'm going to click on a color that is a good sample. I don't want to click like over here where the blue is a little bit darker and a little more purple toned because I want a good sample of all of these blues because I want to affect all of them. Now I can do things like a hue shift if I want to adjust the hue do things like a saturation if I want to adjust the saturation and you guessed it I can do a luminance uh, shift if I want to adjust the luminance what I want to do on this photo is actually decrease the saturation of the blues and increase the brightness a little bit so I'm just gonna bring up the luminance down the saturation and I can toggle this eyeball here you can see it's looking a little better. Now the blues aren't screaming at you so much like they were before. Now you can go in and adjust the range as well. Now what the range does, uh, watch this box up here as I slide the range slider. See how the colors get more or less. Essentially what that's doing is it's increasing the amount of range. So it's increasing the amount of color that is selected. So when my range is very low, I'm selecting less of the blues. So the uh, basically colors that are closer to the sampled color, you'll be selecting more of them with a higher range, less of them with a lower range. If you have a lower range, that's going to only select things that are very, very, very close to the selected color. Whereas if my range is high, I'm going to be selecting like anything that's remotely blue in the image. This is really important, especially when we adjust things like the trees, which we're going to do in a second. If you want, you can go in and manually adjust the range here in hue, saturation, or luminance. You can even click visualize range in order to see what you're selecting. But to be honest, um, I'm a professional photographer. I generally don't even mess with these three. So I don't want to waste your time talking about them and confusing you because they are a little confusing. But the TLDR essentially is that inside the box here is what is being selected. You can increase the size just like that. You can see how that adjusts the range. Same thing here, that adjusts the saturation range. This adjusts the luminance range. So you can do all three of those things as you see fit and adjust this to kind of feather it or unfeather it. So I don't want to talk too much about that. Like I said, not that important. Close that down and then just adjust the range is what I would recommend doing in your own work because that's what I do. So pretty happy with the blues. I might actually want to adjust the saturation to make those blues a little bit more blue and a little less cyan that's looking pretty good again let's go before and after now let's say i wanted to adjust these like kind of in between green and yellow colors i'm gonna get a good selection here probably about right there looks good to me now i'm going to do a hue shift i'm going to change it a little more towards the yellow red luminance shift i'm going to brighten it and saturation shift i'm going to increase the saturation now when i toggle this you can see it affects like all of the greens i'm actually going to lower this range because i just wanted to select those trees so notice when my range is high notice how it's affecting all of these shrubs in here when my range is low it doesn't affect the shrubs as much which is perfect because i just want to touch those trees for the most part 
Uh, that's looking really, really good, I think. I like the balance between the blues and uh, the yellows over here. So that's how to use the color mixer. Um, you could do as many color swatches as you want, but that's kind of just the basics of showing you how to use the color mixer, which is a great tool. Now we're gonna talk about color grading in just a second. I wanna talk about a couple other color tools you have here. You've got vibrance and saturation. Um, usually on most images, you'll find when you increase the vibrance, it's going to target kind of the lesser saturated colors already. Usually between 15 and 20 points is a good place to be depending on your camera. And the saturation affects everything equally. You do wanna be a little bit careful with the saturation here. I usually do five to 10 points just to make your image look nice. I think that's looking pretty good. Now, lastly, if you want to go in and adjust certain colors, but only in certain spots on the image, you can use the masking tool. I'm not going to talk too much about masking, but I am going to link a video where I teach you how to use masking. But I will talk really briefly about how I use this to adjust colors. Let's say I wasn't happy with the blues here because you'll notice these blues are a little more purple. These ones are a little more cyan. Let's say I just wanted to match that up. I'll show you how to do that really briefly here. I'm gonna grab my brush tool. I'm gonna go 100 feather, 100 flow, 100 density. And I'm just gonna paint here and you can check that box if you want to not have the overlay appear like that. I'm just gonna paint in here just like that. Now when I check that box, you can see that's my selection. Now you can actually use that same point color tool that we just used to adjust these colors. I'm gonna grab a good sample going to adjust the hue. Now you'll see it's only affecting the area that we painted in, but you, so when you do this, you want to be careful that you don't overdo it. Right there you can see is too purple, but just coming in here like that, maybe like 10 points. It's really, really light what I've done, but we can toggle before and after. It's really light. Like I said, you can hardly see it, but if you did have a scenario where you wanted to adjust color in one place, but not the other. That's how you could do it. You could create a brush use, or you can create a mask rather using any of these options here. Like I said, I'm not going to cover it too much because that's a little outside of the scope of this video, but I did link another video showing you how to use masking tools in Lightroom. Um, and then you simply just need to synergize that with things like point color here, or you can even adjust the temperature, the tint, you can change the hue, saturation, whatever you want, you can do it here. So that's a really nice, a little more advanced tool for some of you guys out there that want to do some more advanced things. But if you're just basic photographer, you don't want to do anything crazy. You don't need to worry too much about the masking tools. Now, the last thing I want to show you is the color grading. This is not a good example photo to color grade. So we're actually going to pull up a different photo. So I haven't done a whole lot to this photo to begin with, um, but I do want to show you how to use the color grading. This is a good example photo to use it on. Now, when you scroll down and open the color grading box, You've got a few different options. I like setting mine in this uh, the three-way option here as opposed to doing one individually. Um, so select that option so you can adjust all three at once. Then you can adjust midtones, shadows, and highlights. This isn't a tool I use a lot, but it is worth showing you uh, since I want to show you guys literally everything you need to know about color. So you're going to, first, I usually like to adjust the shadows. In most photos, this doesn't apply for every photo, but most photos, you're going to want to cool the shadows and warm the highlights. You can grab this circle and just start dragging it towards blue. This adjusts the shadows. You can see I can tone the shadows however I want here. However, they preferred my preferred way to do it in a more controlled way is actually grab this circle, twirl it around, bring it to the blues. Then I'm going to hold shift and you'll notice that brings up this line. So when I drag, it just goes on a straight point. I don't have to worry about it going around in circles because if you don't have that line, sometimes you might accidentally drag it too far one way or another. So grab the line, bring it out. Now, I usually don't like to do this too terribly much. Just a little bit is usually good. With the highlights, I'm going to drag this so that it's warm. I'm going to do the same thing. Hold shift, bring that into the photo. Now you can toggle what it's doing here with this eye. This is just toggling the shadows and this is just toggling the highlights. I usually don't touch the midtones, by the way. Uh, you definitely can if you want, if you have like a particular style you're going for, but I generally don't do it myself. Um, then you're, you can toggle this eyeball if you want to see them both at the same time. You can adjust this slider if you want to increase the brightness or the darks, like increase the luminance of the color that it's adding. Um, so if you wanted the darks to be maybe a little darker, you wanted the brights to be a little brighter. 
then you can adjust the blending and the balance. Um, the balance is going to make it so that like more of the image receives the shadows adjustment or more of the image receives the highlights adjustment. So for this photo, somewhere about in there looks good. You certainly don't have to adjust these sliders. I'm just kind of trying to show you guys everything that's available here, but I usually don't adjust these when I do use a color grading. Then you can go in and do some blending. So blending is going to affect like how seamless things look. I usually like to increase this blending. A lot of times I bring it all the way up to a hundred. Um, and on this photo, I'm feeling like that's looking pretty nice. Now let's just toggle the before and after on the color grading. So you can see before and after. So I've like, I've toned the image really well. Now the image has some nice complementary colors with these orangish yellows and this blue over here. Um, so it's looking pretty nice. That's how to use color grading. So that really covers just about every color tool in Lightroom. I think that covers everything that you need to know. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Hey, thank you so much for checking out this video. If it was helpful for you, please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel. I produce weekly videos here on the YouTube channel where I help you to become a better photographer as quickly as possible. I'm so glad to have you here. See you guys next time.